Hello, and welcome to another ARC video. Today we're going to be talking about five of the best aquatic tames that you can get as long as you have the base game. Before we jump into it though, I want to let you know I stream ARC every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday with some variety content on Sundays and Tuesdays. It all happens on Twitch at 8pm Central Time, I'll have links for that in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, let's jump into the video. Coming in at number 5 is the Dunkleosteus. This is a pretty simple tame that only has a few uses, but the reason it made it to the list is because of its power and ability to destroy stone structures. If you didn't know, this is actually the only underwater tame that can break through a stone base, so if you get one, I recommend using it for that purpose. However, it does have a few more useful features that I personally like to use the Dunkleo for. What I really like about this dino is that it can collect oil, stone, and metal from underwater nodes. More specifically though, it can collect black pearls consistently from Eurypterids. Dunkleo's naturally high weight capacity makes it an easier storage dino than the Mosasaurus or Plesiosaur, and its moderate rarity makes it a good mid to late game tame before you try and tame something bigger and badder. For example, the Dunkleo has armor all over its body that make it a great mount for taming Tuso Toothus, since the Tuso won't let you tame it unless it's got a dino in its clutches. The Dunkleo typically can survive the Tuso long enough for the taming process to be complete, but if you're looking for more info in order to tame a Tuso Toothus, then it might be in your best interest to stick around. <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> Overall, the Dunkleo isn't that special of a dino, to be honest, but it's a really good stepping stone to bigger, more useful dinos. They're pretty simple tames, meaning there aren't any special requirements to tame them. Just a regular everyday knockout tame, however it is recommended to bring around 250 trank arrows if you're using a primitive crossbow. The Dunkleo likes superior kibble and raw mutton, so by the time you're ready to tame these guys, you should already have access to those items. You'll probably need another water mount in order to tame this guy, because if he catches you, you'll more than likely die pretty quickly. He's fairly slow and takes wide turns, so a more nimble aquatic creature like the Ichthyosaurus is recommended as a mount while attempting to tame the Dunkleo. We'll quickly put up spawn locations for this creature on each map so you have a general idea of where to find them, but for more specifics on their location per map, I've linked the ARC wiki in the description below. For number 4 we have the Basilosaurus. This creature made the list because of its versatility in the depths of the ocean, but mainly because it can withstand the negative effects of Nadaria and Electrophorus, while also being unable to be grappled by the Tuso Toothus. This makes the Basilosaurus one of the best creatures for gathering biotoxins since the Nadaria won't be able to shock you or your mount. Another wonderful perk for the Basilosaurus is its ability to keep players well insulated when enduring the freezing temperatures of the ocean. They provide so much insulation that you might not even need to use scuba leggings, which will make trips to the depths cheaper. The Basilosaurus is also incredibly useful for exploring underwater caves due to a decent health pool and relatively fair melee damage. Its smaller size allows it to fit places that other big ocean creatures can't, making artifact collection almost a guarantee. That being said, it can pretty easily take down other ocean alphas while exploring the depths, which I honestly find surprising because the Basilosaurus is a totally passive creature. It won't attack you even if you attack it, and it's a passive tame. They might not be as easy to tame as you think though, because they're typically surrounded by swarms of mantas, who can quickly shred you if you're not prepared to dispose of them. You should be able to deal with the mantas pretty easily if you have a high level megalodon or another powerful seamount. Understand that mantas might not be your only problems while attempting to tame a Basilosaurus since you're in the depths of the ocean, so making sure you're well prepared is nothing but a good idea. Something else to worry about is that every time the Basilosaurus eats, it emits this stuff that attracts predators. That being said, you can tame them at a decent speed if you use either exceptional kibble or raw mutton. These things are eaters though, they need to eat roughly every 8 to 16 seconds depending on what you're feeding them, so if you start taming them you shouldn't go anywhere until the taming process is complete. You lose a lot of progress and effectiveness if you let them be hungry for too long. If you do plan on taking Basilosaurus to the bottom of the ocean, understand that it starts suffering 5 to 10 points of melee damage once it reaches a certain depth. This usually isn't a problem since it already has a high health pool to begin with and can regenerate health quickly at shallow depths. Lastly, the Basilosaurus can generate oil autonomously and the oil can be quickly refined into gas. We'll be able to find these guys in great abundance near Herbivore Island, but again, we'll put up some spawn locations quickly to give you a rough idea where they can be found. Number three is the Baryonyx. The berry has a lot of reasons to be on this list, not only because it's a lot of players' favorite dino, but because it can stun underwater foes that are roughly the same size. 
These guys are perfect for taming the Bacillosaurus because their stun attack will render the swarms of mantas incapable of fighting back, which will give you a really good opportunity to wipe them out with relative ease. They can also stun Megalodons, but be careful because once you go beyond the size of the Megalodon, they can't really stun anything, so it's advised to use their high underwater movement speed to get away if they're in trouble. Using them to tame the Bacillosaurus is extra useful because while it's using its stun attack, it won't affect the Bacillosaurus in any way. No need to worry about that big boy swimming away from you if you accidentally get too close. The Baryonyx is a great starter mount because it's pretty much just as easy to tame as a raptor. All you have to do is throw a bola at it and feed it some fish. Of course, you can use regular kibble to speed up the process, but if you're using this as a starter tame, you may not be able to make any kibble yet. If you do tame one of these up, understand that they're pescatarians, meaning they'll only eat fish. Shouldn't be too difficult to handle though, since a majority of Ark's rivers are full of easy coelacanth. Anyway, the berry is good for late game players too, since it's so small. It can enter, navigate, and exit nearly every cave on the island, and it can jump. Just a really good all around tame for navigating the Ark's oceans more safely. For as sparse as PvP combat is under the water, you should feel relatively safe riding a berry because it'll knock players off their mounts and give you a pretty easy kill. It's important to note that the Baryonyx does bonus damage to certain dinos, including the Spino and Sarko, which are fairly common tames that are used to explore the depths. The Baryonyx should be relatively easy to find if you're looking to tame one since they spawn on shores around some rivers and oceans. Once again, here are some maps to help you out. Coming in at number two, we have the Mosasaurus. I'm sure you've guys seen these in the Jurassic Park movies and thought to yourself, damn, I gotta get one of those. I definitely did, which is one of the reasons it's on this list. I mean, yeah, it's cool, but the main highlight of this dino is that it's basically an underwater battleship. You can get a platform saddle for it, bring it to the surface, and begin a pretty sneaky raid on coastal bases. You can fit all sorts of siege weapons on the back of the Mosasaur, and it's honestly one of the main reasons I use it. Of course, the Mosasaurus has other perks though. It wouldn't be at number two if it didn't. A lot of people use the Mosasaur to travel throughout the ocean since this is one of the most powerful underwater creatures you can tame. Even better, Nidaria don't even aggro the Mosasaur and if you can kill one of these annoying bastards in one hit, other Nidaria won't try to attack. They're a pretty okay way to get a lot of biotoxin in my opinion, as well as collecting a ton of oil. Their absolutely enormous weight capacity allows them to carry almost everything you want them to. Unfortunately, these guys are a bit difficult to tame though. They're found at a depth where many other giant underwater scaries are found and all of them together could potentially put an end to your taming plans if you're not careful. Fortunately for you though, any Megalodon with a few points put into movement speed can quickly outmaneuver the Mosasaur, so consider bringing it with you to tame. It's smart to start tranking them, then move to a higher depth where they won't follow you, then repeat this process until the Mosa is knocked out. Mosasaurus actually made it to this list instead of the Plesiosaur because of its slightly easier taming process. The Plesiosaur requires a ton of narcotics or biotoxin to keep it knocked out due to its rapidly decreasing torpor, so the Mosasaurus in my opinion is slightly better. Not only because it's easier to tame, but it and the Plesiosaur have roughly the same utilities and abilities. Speaking of taming, the Mosasaurus takes more food than any other apex predator in the game. A level 150 Moza will eat 92 exceptional kibble, while requiring 536 narcotics. Or if you use raw mutton, it'll take 270 pieces, while also requiring 1,609 narcotics. You might be thinking, Terrifier, how is that easier than taming a plesiosaur? The answer is simple, the Mosasaurus just straight up requires less attention since it doesn't drop torpor as quickly. Additionally, by the time you want to tame these guys, food and narcotics really shouldn't be an issue. Anyway, if you want to find these guys, they're in the northeast corner of the map on RAG or in these places on other maps. Coming in at number one, we have the Tuso Toothus. This big boy is pretty useful when it comes to taming other creatures. They're really a wonderful companion if you're trying to tame any underwater creature as big as a Rex or a Mosasaurus. They have a super cool grapple that can begin applying torpor damage to the target at a rate of 10 torpor per second, regardless of melee damage. Granted, this is a 
pretty slow way to tame anything, but it's free. You can also use it to help speed up the knockout times, since you can dismount and shoot the target with your own tranks. Unfortunately, the Bacillosaurus, Leopleurodon, and other Tuso Toothus cannot be grappled by the Tuso, but it's a small price to pay for basically complete control over ocean creatures. The Tuso has some other pretty cool perks like an ink attack that makes it move 30% faster for 8 seconds while blinding foes that have come into contact with the ink. This is useful if the Tuso is taking too much damage or you simply want to move faster in the water. These perks alone are enough to get this guy to number 1, but it doesn't stop there. The Tuso can collect large amounts of angler gel from anglerfish, black bears from eurypterids, and biotoxin from nadaria due to its long reach. Be careful with the nadaria though because the Tuso can still take damage from them, however you won't be dismounted. There are a lot of players that use the Tuso to transport their dinos from one location to another quickly and safely. Basically the Tuso is the titan of the sea with extra functions. They produce oil autonomously, much like the Bacillosaurus, and the oil can actually be stacked with the Bacillo oil. These guys are honestly super difficult tames though, they're tamed passively and require sacrifice of sorts. The Tuso doesn't want to eat food unless it has something in its grasp. The vast majority of the internet and myself recommend using a Dunkleosteus with a good saddle on it to begin the taming process. Alternatively, you could use a collection of Carbonimus with good saddles as well, although this might quickly become a lengthy and tedious process to manage everything. Once you've finally started the taming process though, they'll eat a shitload of black pearls, so make sure you've got plenty of them ready to go. The nice thing about taming the Tuso is that their taming affinity doesn't drop when they're attacked, so you don't have to worry too much about other sea creatures attempting to attack it. I mean, don't let it die, but at least you won't have to start the taming process over again, right? So to wrap this up, you can find them in abundance on Ragnarok, as well as in these places, on these maps. Did this list help you? What would you have changed? Let me know in the comments. If you found this content helpful or entertaining, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Hey, Friendly reminder that I stream arc every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as well as variety content on Sunday and Tuesday. Catch me on Twitch at 8pm Central Time. I hope to see you there. As always, thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you in the next video. Music, 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 yeah.